Welcome. To tweet or not to tweet? This is the big question that South Africans are faced with these days. And not just tweet, internet on the whole is proving to be a costly indulgence. South Africans have been urged to boycott all social media platforms today. The hashtag social media blackout is encouraging users to refrain from using data bundles in protest of the high data costs. The campaign is spearheaded by popular singer and poet and social activist Nsiki Mazwai. Mazwai says the high cost of data in South Africa has a negative impact on society. She says the high cost of data affects mostly the people on the ground. The boycott is encouraged to take place every Wednesday. Requests have also been sent to the Competition Commission to probe cell phone companies. Some social media users say they will take part in the boycott, while others say that the stay away could have a severe impact on businesses which depend on social media. On Tuesday, Ms. Wyatt took to Twitter to ask her, her over 80,000 followers to boycott social networks like Facebook and Twitter. She wrote, I will not be on social media on Wednesday the 21st of June because hashtag data must fall and it is long overdue that we took action. Don't buy data, don't log in. The tweet started the hashtag social media blackout which went on to become the top trend on social media. And to discuss this further, we are joined in studio by Tabo Shangani and uh, the Deputy SRC President of the University of Pretoria, and Nsiki Mazwai, a singer and poet in studio. Good evening and welcome to ANN7. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let me start with you, Nsiki. Um, hashtag blackout. What is the rationale behind this campaign? The rationale behind this campaign is that these corporates are only going to hear us once we start affecting their bottom line. So if we deny them of revenue every single Wednesday, they will actually have to give in and we are influencing the competitive nature of the industry, which actually needs to be looked into by the government and by um, the regulatory bodies. Um, how has the response been? Well, I haven't been on social media since yesterday, so I have no idea. Um, it should not be trending, guys, because nobody should be on social media. But I mean, it's good for awareness. Today was a trial run, so um, next week, Wednesday, we're on it. I'm expecting more numbers next week because more people know about it. And this is the only way that we can actually make our, our voices heard. I think for me, it's much more than marching and protesting. We're actually taking action now that people, that the corporates are actually going to feel in their bottom line. Well, um, you deal with the youth on a daily basis um, and internet usage in this demographic is the highest. Um, what is the effect of the high cost of data on students? I think the effect of a high cost on data, you know, particularly coming from a university background and how that, um, you know, affects students on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it, it then brings about what I call an exist existential crisis in so far as how we relate to the material, how our universities, you know, in essence, are either anti-poor, you know, anti-black to exactly. an extent, and what that means in terms of data costs. Now, I want to take us back to look at Keys Must Fall last year as an example, and, you know, the university is going online. Now, when you go online, you shut your gates to the universities. How does that then begin to affect the poor black student? Mm. Not necessarily a black student per se, but you know, to a large extent, it happens to mm. be black students. So mm. when you speak of data must fall, there's a lot of paradigms in which one can look at it. You know, it's not just about Facebook, it's not just about Twitter. Mm. There's assignments, there's research that needs to take place. And with the current costs of, of, of data, you know, it's rather unfortunate that we're even discussing the cost of data right. in this day and age. We should be talking about you know, data being free uh, to begin with for these imperatives that yeah. we speak about. It is a basic human right. We're living in the age of information. So inf access to information right now is like access to water. We cannot, South Africa's got the second highest data cost in mm. the world. Mm. There's something wrong there. People are paying 10 rand for a gig. We're paying 150 rand. I can't afford it. Yeah. Um, I just want to uh, include in the conversation, joining us on the phone, is Opa Fumba from Right to Know, the coordinator. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us. To join in the conversation, this high cost uh, we hear is making it impossible for um, students and young people and poor people. They're denying entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs denying people access to information. What is your comment on this, Opa? 
I, I think for me, it's the evaluation of a human right in terms of access to information and our rights to communication, you know. And with our loved ones of businesses in terms of the service providers, you know, as the one pulling the shots on the thing. And then like, that's why data is becoming so very expensive, you know. I mean, how we can pay 150 for one gig when other countries like India are able to pay, I mean, no, 11 rand in Nigeria, they're able to pay 22 rand in Namibia, they're able to pay 22 rand. I mean, there is other space where if there's an asset to roll out of Wi-Fi so that people can able to have connection where there are safety areas where they need to be. But because of the, the service provider that you have, which is MTN and Vodacom, as the one calling the cards. And then where are we as people to intervene? Because we also need to communicate as much as the has allow us to do, but because of that, the one who has on this, on this matter. I think that's where the leakage is in terms of communication, because there's not the free flow communication also where we can say Rika could be able to protect us, you know, because most of the things that we need to use for your data, you know, are very expensive, you know. So that's my intervention in terms of the humanity of the striking of a human right. Because if we really need to speak about the human rights, we'll know what we're talking about. We're talking about the data that can also be flexible and then accessible, you know, to everyone, regardless what color are you. I believe that everyone needs to communicate, regardless what what race or what belief, what culture, what what philosophy are you or what academic are you, but we all in base of communication, how do you paternize the communication that does not cost so much mm-hmm. and takes a lot from the poor, almost, almost, because you're going to look at it in terms of these new phones that we have. Also, it also costs in, into it, you know, because you don't stop paying. You pay your phone up to 3000 but you keep paying, and then you advertise it for free without getting anything, you know. So that's, that's my argument to this, how to open up on it. As I write, you know, further, you know, that time must fall, you have to work. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Opa, stay with us. We'll come back to you. Uh, we invite our viewers to call us on 011-542-2186 to share your views here on ANN7. Do call in. Uh, let's stay with this conversation. Mm. Opa was saying that the cost in Nigeria, as an example, is mm. much cheaper. Why are the costs in South Africa so extraordinarily high? Well, it's clear that there's no, um, nobody's regulating the telecommunications industry and uh, the corporates are doing as they please, which is why we've sent um, complaints to, the, to ICASA and the Complaints Commission. And we're also finding that they are also slow in response. And what I'm also finding is that people who work at ICASA also work at Vodacom. There's a revolving door that's happening. So it's not going to work if nobody's regulating. Right, so for me it's an issue of who's protecting the consumer. You say that they are slow to respond, have you had any replies? We've had no replies, like uh, we, on the campaign we've, um, we, we put a call out to people and said please, when we put out a link and we said please uh, submit to your, your claims and we haven't really, they haven't engaged us and neither have the cell phone companies, they also, their silence is also quite loud. Mm. So um, it brings attention to the fact that how is the country being run, <laughs> mm. right? Tawo to you. Mm. So um, we have seen many protests, as an example, led by students through the medium of social media. Um, does this or could this uh, high cost of data hamper the students' right to raise legitimate concerns? I think, you know, when you answer that question, one needs to think about it in the terms of how social media is used generally, you know, in political participation, one will begin to use with with the, you know, the fourth wave of industrialization coming into play. Social media is, in essence, a platform where we Mm. communicate on a day-to-day basis. So to to strip the voice away from, you know, from people on a basis of cost alone should be considered a human rights violation because it's it's a platform in which I'm going to air my concerns, Mm -hmm. my frustrations, uh, raise awareness around whatever the case might be. And to strip me of that is to deny my very, you know, existence to an extent. Opa, I will go to you. Would you like to respond to that on uh, the idea of political participation and uh, people being stripped of their voices? Yeah, even the, the structures that we, as, as, as a society, the whole, the way we be structured and the way the information you have to flow, it doesn't flow according to the way it's supposed to. And the people will get frustrated and do some other things, sort of planning. 
So I think the issue of Forma Data it also it needs also to be collected in such a way that it does not escalate in such a way that it reforms the violence into it. But then they are very violent already to us to shut down the way of we need to participate in all structures before they make any amendment into it. You know. But then the process itself and the other companies have raised that that no, even the CEOs from these companies like NTN, Vodacom, are also the members of the ICASA board. You know, so it, it also it tells you exactly who's who's who and then where are we. So we're not going to have a voice that we do want to have as much as we can, but because we're going to be limited. And the way we're doing it, if we open up the space, it's about the presentation. Let's present what we think and let's don't go back and discuss what they it takes time, 30 days. For, I mean, you know South Africa how the process is. And then there's a reshuffling at the same time that also caused the frustration in terms of to, to exercise the right to, the right to participate, the right to, to public participation, you know, in all levels, in all archives of government. But then that is very limited and it's political, you know. So yeah, that would that, be my, my input into that. Uh, let me come back to you. Um, how do you feel that the high cost of data is affecting um, young entrepreneurs, small businesses, mm. uh, people starting out in the, in the working world? What, how well, would you obviously, um, like I said before, we're living in the age of information. So access to information is completely everything. Um, entrepreneurs, we are coming from an apartheid background where black people have been previously barred um, from entry into industries. The quickest way to um, reverse that is that people must have access to capital and access to information and to internet. So young entrepreneurs can't access clients, they can't access specials, there's many things they can't access because they can't afford data. So it really has a direct impact. And then we can't speak to our family members in the rural areas because they can't afford data, they don't have smartphones. So it really is an issue that affects like from a, a grassroots level, from our, our, our interactions with family members to trying to build our economy. We can't build an economy if we don't have access to internet. Data is, um, it is a necessity, as you've said, mm. and, and most people uh, have a smartphone. So the, the demand seems to be growing. Um, the, the, the platform is growing, the mm. amount of uh, consumers is higher. So you would think that the cost would go down right. with the higher use, user. Exactly. Why are we not benefiting from not economies happening? of scale? Why is that Ex not It's because it's there's position. no regulation. Exactly. Do you want to... I was, was, was going to add, it's, it's an element of exploitation. Mm. You know, if, if the, the demand is so, is so high, uh, you're using that to exploit, you know, poor, and it's mostly poor people who get, who get affected by, by yeah. these data charges. It's poor people. I mean, if I'm going to buy a gig for 150 rand, I'm told even worse that you only have 30 days to use it up. Mm. After 30 days, it vanishes into thin Which air. Which is rubbish also. I mean, who's regulating the rules that, you know, it just seems like these communications companies are just doing as they please and charging what they want. Then the CEOs are getting 50 million and people, you know, it's just like ridiculous. So we just kind of need to figure out who's regulating this industry. Mm. Um, also, I believe that uh, data expires after a certain right. amount of time. Yes. What do you think on that? That's exactly what I'm talking about, the, the idea that I'll buy data today and, you know, depending on what, on what you buy, I mean, for instance, um, you have some cell phone networks whereby you can buy what you call daily bundles. I mean, that's the, the cheapest way to survive in this day and age. To buy it's not daily. even cheap. Ironically. Relatively speaking. Re relatively speaking. I mean, you know, it's, you buy 100 megabytes for like, what? 12 rand, 15 rand, whatever the case might be, which expires in six hours, 12 hours. So, you know, you're forced to it's use just, it. It's, it's, yeah. it's just a, a sick system. It's just wrong. It's classist business practice. Mm -hmm. And even the fact that they go into your airtime after they finished your data, it's like we have not consented to that. It's daylight robbery. You know, the cell phone companies are running with their own rules and they're exploiting us. And we need to know which body it is mm. that really protects important. our consumers. What is it that you want uh, to hear from the Competition Commission? What I want to hear from the Competition is first of all that acknowledge that things have been going wrong and data prices to fall. It's as simple as that. Um, I put out a call to be like, what guys can you afford? Everybody is cool with 10 rand a gig. I don't know if Tabo uh, Tab wants to add, but we're cool with 10 rand a gig. I don't have 10 rand to begin with. You don't with. have 10? I don't have 10 Well, we rand. need free Wi-Fi areas and exactly. 
I you mean, know, it's just really sorry. Just sorry, just to add on the on the on the idea of you know when you think of data, think of internet access, free Wi-Fi, whatever the case might be. In fact, we need to acknowledge that for so long we've been exploited, and so far as data charges have been, you know, have been developing in our country. And what I would expect, in fact, from the Competition Commission is, is reparations for all this mm. exploitation that has been happening yeah. throughout, you know, yeah. the lack of regulations. Yeah. Before you can even get to a, an, an element of saying, yeah. actually, uh, let us, not even actually, yeah. you should, you reparations. know, reparations for, for right? the exploitation. Mm -hmm. And secondly, also, is that the element of data, mu it must fall. The mm -hmm. cost must fall. And yeah. it's not even, in fact, even boycotting on, on, on one day is not even enough. No, it's not one day. It's uh, every single Wednesday. I'm, I'm saying in, within the, the, the framework of a week, you know, that even that yeah. Wednesday is not enough. Yeah. In fact, the call should be made out to say, up until data falls, all South Africans must boycott social media, must boycott buying data, must boycott all of these things. But yeah. of course, businesses will suffer. And, uh, and, and we just need yeah, to take it one step at a time. People are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's just a radical, a radical approach. Yeah. But it, it also speaks to the frustration that, that we, we experience on a day-to-day -day basis to say that, why is it that a year later, after you know, Tibo Touch has started the whole data must fall, which is, we find ourselves having the very same com um, conversation and nothing has changed, uh, to be honest. Well, he did sell the movement, but about, we can was, move on to the next question. I was writing <laughs> to say that you know, some people really sold us out. Mm. You, know, you got your <laughs> slight silly gains and at the expense of, of, the, masses. of the masses. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. That is Nsiki Mazwai, a singer, poet, and uh, Taubo Shingange, uh, uh, Deputy SRC President of the University of Pretoria, joining us live in ANN7 to discuss this new campaign, hashtag data, uh, well, hashtag blackout. And now it's over to our in-house social media expert, uh, Taboho Masia. Taboho, to tweet or not to tweet? Well, thank you, Alison. That is the central question today, to tweet or not to tweet. Personally, I'll tell you, I have not touched any social media today, and this is not because it's in support of the movement or anything else. It really is by default. I simply don't have data. It's two days before payday, but I will support if we all go out there and say free data for all. Nonetheless, these are all the trending topics that we're following for you, specifically this afternoon with the one for data. Y'all tweeting, Chuck says, wanted to join the social media blackout movement. Mara, my data expires today, so it would be a waste. It is kind of making sense. You bought your data, if it expires today, it might be good to sort of make it effective. Jumi So says, dear social media blackout in line with Piti Piti Samona, South Africa. We supported you in principle. We had to do what we all had to do for the country. A lot of people saying they do, in principle, support the movement, but technically and quite realistically, we all live on our smartphones these days. So it's quite a hard task. Cameo says, I knew the social media shutdown was just a joke. The real protests happen on the streets. You have to get y'all's behinds to the headquarters of the social media providers, the network providers, if you want to be heard. That's a central message a lot of people are saying on Twitter this afternoon. Real Bongza says, I regret to inform you that social media shutdown was unsuccessful. We will keep your hashtag for future purposes. One of them being data must fall and also free data for all. I know in Pretoria we're now getting free Wi-Fi, so there are strides in that sense, but we do need to conscientize and cry foul to the high prices of data in South Africa. Tony says, you see why I never trust these celebrities. They said social media shut down nye nye. But here we are tweeting, my people have been played. I was having a conversation with Nsiki Mazwai off air saying that a lot of people that are celebrities and supporting the, this movement have not been tweeting today. So after the show, I will sure be on Twitter to check the validity of that statement. Coombs says the social media shutdown, shutting down social media will not bring down the prices of data. Only not buying and using data will bring it down. That's quite realistic. But the message is the prices are too high and we are the consumers, so we do need to be heard. Figalem Balula, of course had to say something, says I'm here on social media shutdown protests to keep the law and order. We don't want damage to tweets and vandalism in mentions watching the timeline like a hawk as he does. Our Honourable Minister of Police Day weighing in on the topic. It really is something that people have been talking about for months. Thibaut Touch brought it to the fore last year and he was heckled on Twitter just a couple of days ago when people heard that now he can go on to Touch HD 
for free on MTN. But the conversation, of course, continues on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at ANN7TV. You can keep going on to Twitter and tweet if, you, of course, you are not in support of this particular movement. Nonetheless, I'm Tebu on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Until tomorrow, it's back to my yellow bone.